be professional? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I got it. Posture check, okay. Wait, so we're starting here. Go elbow. Um, okay, I was just about to say, I don't think this is the worst. So this is what I'll break down um, off the bat, is sending two elbow isn't the worst, but you have to be kind of like conscious about where you're placing yourself. You're obviously the one that's behind. Um, so if you're the one that's behind, you need to kind of play with that in mind as well. Like, you can't be throwing yourself out there to die, because like most likely this guy who's in front of you is the one that's going to be taking the most damage and doing the most damage, like, right off the, like, off the get. So, you being right here is actually not too bad. You need to, like, watch over your teammate, make sure he gets rockets, and make sure you're just kind of doing damage to, like, the guy window like you do, and the guy that's going to eventually probably push up on silver, or eventually, or not eventually, but maybe the case there was going to be a guy elbow. Here's the thing, too, is there's nobody going elbow, you really shouldn't be dying here. You really shouldn't be dying here. Unless, like, you're doing what you do and you're just kind of full challenging out. And there's even a guy BR. So, you have to just make sure you're playing your life for your teammate who is playing for top rockets. That instant death is definitely, uh, it's going to work out okay because your teammate actually gets rockets. But that's very lucky. The fourth guy in their team wasn't even playing. And you going first dead when it's a 3v4 like that, it's just, it's just not good. It's just not good in that situation. And otherwise, what I was going to say is going two elbow is probably not the most typical thing. You could have maybe gone window or gone silver to then, like, do the same thing where you're basically fighting for your teammate rocket side. Um, but doing what you did still wasn't that bad. It's just the way you actually handled it about being too aggressive. You don't need two people being highly aggressive up top. You could have even gone down low and flanked through to secure elbow and then turn in. All right, on to the next. I mean, has rockets. You're still playing elbow. Um, not too bad. Pushing through. Too dead. Should definitely have your reticle. You're just looking straight at the ground. This is kind of. This is definitely maybe a little nitpicky, but this is like I think a big thing about gunfights in general, and like why I'm always ready, and most pro players are ready. Is like if you're walking down here, two people are dead, but you don't know exactly. Um. You don't know exactly where the other two are at. So you should be like pre-aiming, walking down. If you want to be sprinting, that's fine. But you should be kind of sprinting with your head up. You're just looking, yeah, as you see, you're kind of just looking straight down. You should be looking straight ahead, being ready for somebody to challenge you. You gotta be, you just got to be ready. Still looking at the ground. Charging in's okay. You get the flagpole. It's kind of lucky that you didn't find anybody there. You're kind of instantly pushing off of elbow to challenge for flag. That's alright. Um, and then this is just kind of unlucky. I would almost say, like, I need to, like, rewatch this to maybe give a better advice on, like, what I would probably do in this situation, where as I said, you need to have your reticle ready. If this is me, I'm probably walking and sitting here for a second. If I see that it's completely open, I always check my corners too. Walk through, walk through, check corners, this is fine. Pull the flag. And on top of that, all of your teammates are at snipe. So it's like maybe running, uh, but your teammates are dying too. This is probably as best you could do. This kind of flag pulls okay. This flag pulls okay. But I think in your mind you're like still ready to run it. If you're getting shot in the back, or you're getting shot at all, and you're kind of like the only one out here, you might want to just toss the flag and be ready to like take a fight or just get behind cover and play your life. It seems like you're ready to just run the flag while weak and you have like no support. You really weren't going to get that flag far since they have pretty much the entire map presence at like snipe and they're spawning up already on top of you. Um, I think it's just moving like too much. Yeah, like, you didn't really give yourself a little bit of a buffer to kind of, you know think a little bit about like where people could be or what you should be doing next. You're just kind of grab flag, pull flag, run flag, and that's all you're kind of in the mindset of it soon. Okay, I'll be spawned elbow, you go back to flag. Again, this is kind of smaller that I want to just like make note of. It's not like costing you at all in this particular situation, but where are you at? There you are. In particular, like if you're about to walk window, 
So this is kind of like a couple things. You're about to walk window. You're not already. You're already like out in the middle, and you're not even checking if somebody's like top cat or on your own window ready to shoot you. And you're not even really checking the spots. Again, the pre-aim, like having your reticle placement. You're not checking if somebody is top cat, their BR, and then kind of on their window like the guy is. You're looking at the ground, and you just kind of swipe while you're already out. It's just something about being more efficient. It's very small, but can uh, it can get you pretty far with just doing these small things. But you're still alive, and you're in your base, so it's okay. Like, like I said, it wasn't like a big deal, though, what I was just talking about. Trying to, ooh, no, no, no. You definitely don't want to thrust out when you're getting shot in the side like that. I was gonna say you probably should just commit to being kind of aggressive on this particular position here. Maybe it's because you don't know if the guy's there or not. You saw him there. You thought he was there. At this point, if you don't see anybody. If this is me, I'm like full committing to just the clamber. Like maybe you die, but at least you die further out, like trying to do something. Or even if you get shot in the back, especially now after you jump and you don't see anybody, like thrust forward, try and just get to that ledge. Maybe even tank a shot. You don't even need a thrust. Just tank a shot because this kind of this ledge right here kind of sucks. But just get up here instead. Or this is probably a little bit more difficult with how far out you are. Like thrust back and get back in a cave. Like this thrust to the left. That's a big no-no right there. You gotta you gotta do something else. You need to go forwards. You need to go backwards. Because if you're getting shot on your side, like those are your only two like options, really. Or in this situation, it's also a little lucky. If these guys were hitting their shots. You would have just been dead like almost instantly. But if you thrust out, this is kind of this can be something in every situation. Like if you're in a very open spot, but like you have a wall to, or some object to work off of, just get behind this and just kind of chill here. You, as you can see, you kind of thrust left, you're looking for the guy that's shooting you, you're weak, and you're still just kind of out there. Maybe you get that kill, but it's like, it's more so like, what's going to happen next? You've just kind of been on the back foot already with like, where you're putting yourself. Like, again, it's just like the instant decisions you're making when like, you have time to, you know, take some extra shots, or just sit behind a wall, or do something else to just like, okay, you can think to yourself, what do I do? what do I want to do here? Instead, it's like kind of more reactionary. Spawn elbow and you push over. It's okay, yeah, you don't want to turn back here. Kind of unfortunate. I feel like you're you're like playing into some some fights here. Again, I Something I also noticed when you're running up, you're not, again, your reticle is just kind of, like, it was in the right spot, but then you're looking straight down. I don't really know why you keep doing this. At least this is the second time now where you want to have your reticle placed for just anything that could happen. Somebody's just going to walk out like this guy does, but instead you're, like, looking straight down. Um, while you're the ground. Not really too sure why. But this is fine here, like, once you get here. But then if this is me, I'm playing my height advantage. Maybe you're going to get shot in the back, I'm not really too sure, but I'm still probably going to try and play off my advantage here. And then maybe, like, use your nades. You also want to maybe uh, use your nade here. Uh, just because you probably know where he is. You, it seems like you know he's around that corner. Like, just bank a nade at your feet or off of, like, this wall. And then kind of play off of that. Maybe jump in the air so that you're high above him when challenging to be in just a weird angle. Because he kind of just walked right into him. You could even let him walk into you. Most people are going to end up challenging. But again, it's just you seem to be just instantly walking forward. Um, to just instantly walking forward, instantly acting on some things. So in general, like when you're in certain spots, I would recommend like maybe just like giving yourself just an extra second to think. Like, do you have nades? Have you checked your radar? What time is it? Do you have a teammate? Like, those kind of things you need to, like... Okay, like, you're in a good spot here, for example, on elbow, like I was saying. You could have just taken a second. Like, and probably noticed you had a nade, and then, like, bank a nade and acted off of that. That's just an example of, you know, just letting yourself breathe for a second, rather than automatically just jumping straight into it. 
No, 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 no. You gotta be careful. You gotta be very careful about where you're putting yourself out here. That is way too far out. I don't think this is the worst. One thing I will say is after your teammate... Like, if this is me... I'm gonna probably be saying that a lot. Like, if this is me, because... Um, I feel like that might just be the best way of kind of giving a perspective of what I would do or what I think is probably right. Is like, I think... You doing what you do here is actually okay, but you need to cut off these angles. You need to cut off these angles. And you even see that there's a teammate, your teammate is in cave already, which also, if you weren't taking this damage, means you could probably just push right on through to snipe. Um, whether you go grass, I would say probably just go top cat, and just get a better angle and have more presence on these people here. Make sure this guy's taken care of. But you cannot be taking this damage from and dying the way you die. In this situation, that's just a very unnecessary death. Like that guy that's top rockets, he cannot be the one that kills you. He just can't be. <laughs> What's that, Tesco? You just wait. You just wait. What do you mean, no Promethean vision? I'm looking right through the wall right there. I can see him. There you are. <clears throat> yeah, see, they, they even got the flagpole off of that. One thing I think a lot of people get sort of mixed up is like if there's a tense situation going on it's not always the right decision to make like the fastest decision or like the fastest movement action is not always the best now if you can be efficient and like make the right decision quickly that's great but like you making the decision that you did and just like you thought you needed to be very far out to like challenge that flag like you didn't need to do that but you felt like you almost felt propelled to like walk out there um and getting shot at, whereas if you just played like a little bit more further back, or recognized you had support in cave, you could have just, you know, taken a different route, and taken your time, and then like probably not let them get that cap, because ultimately, you died, your other teammate dies, he didn't have support, and now they still got the flag cap anyway. So if you're just like a little bit more efficient with like where you're putting yourself, mm, again, instantly going out, again, you're just out there, you're, you're right out there. Like, you're getting shots, you're breaking shields, but it's like, obviously, this is just what happens in these kind of positions where you break that guy's shields, you're not doing anything, dude. There's still four people alive, and he's right on that corner, right on his window, and your teammate just died as well. You gotta put yourself for, like, the bigger picture plays. Place yourself, like, top cat if you can, shooting down on these guys. Backing people down from up here is much more um, oppressive than if you're right here on silver. And as soon as you broke that guy's shields, I still wouldn't have, like, gone to silver like you did, but you went to silver, and then you broke that guy's shields, I would have instantly, like, backed up in a snipe, maybe gone, like, to top snipe, to couch, or straight to maze, to BR, to, uh, take this fight. Again, you're completely out in no man's land, just throwing yourself out there. Because, like, that, how aggressive you just were there amounted to nothing. There is a right time to be aggressive, and I would say Halo 5, like, you do get rewarded for being aggressive a lot of times, but it's still being aggressive, like, at the right moments. When, like, it is, it is just the right time. When your teammates are dying and they're, like, four alive and you're just out in the middle of the map, that's just not going to help you. That's just not going to help you. And then this death right here, I feel like it still was preventable. It's kind of unlucky. But one thing I will say that I've noticed a lot in this game is you're doubling up rockets a lot. You've done this, I think, like three or four times now where you had a choice to go anywhere else or fill in somewhere else. Instead, you just doubled up with, like, somebody top rockets. You're not even going, like, low rockets, you know, maybe to elbow. Instead, you're just doubling up, sprinting straight forward right to where your teammate already is. And, like, this kind of just allows it to happen. You see there's a nade there? You see where your teammate's fighting, like, you just, you have to, again, just let yourself, like, let the game breathe a little bit. Maybe get up top, you'd see that guy top cat, you know there's nades coming through, there should be a guy coming up top rockets soon. Like, let him walk to you, let them come to you. Like, give yourself to, like, you don't always have to be pushing for information. Like, the information will just come to you, uh, especially if they're making their push like they are. Instead, you're just walking into nades, walking into shots. Um, right off your respawn, it gets you killed. Just 
shred it in every way possible. <laughs> I didn't know there was more than one way to be shredded. See, there's a sniper on elbow. Yeah, that long range fight you don't really want to take. If this was me spawning cave, I really probably would not have taken that long to just kind of turn back. Because you were watching, but you're standing still. Dude, I want to stay on your POV. Uh, when are you going to spawn up? There you are. Like, if I spawn cave here, and you know, like, you turn back because you know that they're, like, making their push. You should be trying to, like, move through or move back into cave so you have a better angle to, like, watch them from elbow or the guy coming in from window here to support your teammate. Because you're just drawing your effective, like, range even further back. You're not really able to do too much with the pistol here, especially against a sniper. Even after you back him down a couple shots, even right there, just out in the open. Out in the open asking, asking to be shot. Uh, yo, what's up, Jason? Got that five, that's good. I would definitely say go for the read right about now. Oof. Yeah, that's rough. That's pretty rough. Let me rewatch that a little bit. You got that five, and then where is the guy on your elbow? Damn, that's unfortunate. Teammates are dying. You got that kill. That's like a really weird situation because you obviously needed to look at the flag guy initially. And then there was actually a guy above you on elbow. But it's like I probably wouldn't even have thought there was a guy above me on elbow unless he was shooting. I don't know. I think if this is me, if I get that five like that, I probably instantly like get back to I don't know low trench here. Maybe walk out low and like try and play for the flag here rather than walking out in the open. Because if you're ask, you you were really asking to get shot when you're <laughs> front of the base like this, especially when your teammates are dead and again there's just no support. So you could probably after you get that kill, that first kill is great but you could probably set yourself up into just be in a better position, but you kind of tunneled on that guy. And then I think you start walking towards Reed, but then you get shot, so you walk away. You still got two kills, so that's great. You did well with what like the situation you put yourself in. But I think long-term play, like the long-term plays would be to like get that first kill and try and just set up. Because you don't need to like really, like that flag is in a really bad spot for them. Especially if you're able to get, like, I don't know, on couch or top rockets and just watch over. Your teammates are also spawning up, too, so they can help. You don't really need to be the one to, like, make the big play here. You just need to get kills. Um, but you kind of jump the gun, and it's natural in that situation. It's a little hectic. So you did okay. But you could probably do a little bit better by just, again, like, allowing the situation to breathe a little bit. Recognize where you're at. You have two teammates to snipe. Definitely could be putting yourself in a different spot. You're gonna push through, that's okay, this is actually fine. Teammates are sitting back a little bit. Mm. Again, you're doubling up. You're doubling up where your teammates are already at. You really don't need a guy going window here, because it looks like this guy might go window, or your sniper guy can kind of cover this window area. You were already here getting back down. You just need to get your shields and then help this guy right here who's already out there. If you support this guy, like, that's what matters the most, but you kind of just dipped on him and then made, like, a flank play when you didn't need to make a flank play. What's up, Chibuko? Toss the flag out. There's just a lot of... I think you're... You definitely have a lack of awareness for where you're... Like, where you recognize where your body's at. And, like, where you're susceptible to, like, being shot from. Because I feel like, even in this situation, it's, again, kind of hectic. You could toss the flag out here. Like, you get to this point, And, like, if this is me, I'm instantly thrusting while one shot to, like, get to cover. And, like, just chill down here. And maybe, like, just sit behind a wall or sit up here on this block behind the wall. Yo, what's up? Don't play. Um...
but you got to recognize or get better at recognizing just what opportunities you have to stay alive. Like, you don't even need to try and fight or nade the guy behind you. Like, if you can make a play by, like, making these guys look for you longer, by, like, somehow getting around this corner and getting down low, um, that will do a lot more than just you trying to, like, get as much damage as you can there. Yeah, and you're doubling up elbow. You go elbow way too much. Way, way too much. You need... Like, one guy here is typically all you need. You shouldn't really be running two people elbow. Like, you had two teammates at snipe as well off of your respawn. You gotta try and work off of these guys. Yeah, you're definitely autopiloting to elbow. Uh, as, like, your normal push out. And that just can't be a thing. As soon as you see a teammate here on elbow... You shouldn't even be bothering. Like, if I see this on Kali Flag, I just think, okay, I think elbow's okay. Like, I don't need to worry about somebody coming elbow. If you can stay away from elbow, like, most of the time you want to stay away from elbow. Uh, especially if snipe's open. Um, it's okay to, like, check it. Maybe you just want to... Even if you stood right here. Like I said, I still think this is overall the, not a good play. But even if you stood right here to, like, check low and check, like, the middle of the map, and then, like, go back. That's what you need to be doing. Like, your focus needs to be not on elbow. You're just too, like, stuck on headstrong and trying to just go elbow. And see, now, you basically wasted about, I don't know, 8 to 10 seconds, I think, of your respawn to then do what I was saying. Now you're walking towards snipe side. Like, you, off of your respawn, you need to get to cave, you need to go window, you need to go... Uh, in the maze, you need to do whatever you can to just try and force this side of the map and stay alive in some of these positions. And now you're down low. So, um, again, I, I think this is just you moving too quickly. Your teammates are dying, getting pushed. Like, I think you need to just kind of, like, clear out some of the some of this side of the map for yourself and your team, and then just, like, wait to see. If you probably would have recognized your teammates getting shot from window. You could have instantly, if you were still cave, instantly like thrust led to kill this guy and then just pushed back out. That is like how you want to break these pushes and move out as quickly as possible. But now, now you're at snipe, your teammate died, and you're getting damaged, but you just don't really have that much of a presence on the rest of the map. Like these guys are just, again, you're just kind of falling into the trap of what the other team is doing to you. So they're probably definitely going to get that cap. Yeah, don't even bother with that at that point. There's no saving that flag. You need to get the snipe. You need to get the snipe quick. Get the snipe at least. Again, this is still something that applies to every map. Any game mode, you got to check more corners. Like You got to just check around and just see what is going on. It's just a lot of... You don't really have the general awareness of like what needs to be happening or what you're trying to do. Or like what the other team could even be doing is probably, for this particular situation, a better way to put it. Like there could be guys sitting grass, a guy maze, a guy fountain, snipe ramp, like there is. Um, but you instantly start pushing into their flag. You have almost eight minutes left in the game still. You have tons of time. You have tons of time. Um, oh... Yeah. Once there's that much time and you walking into the flag and you kind of su suspect it, you gotta just kind of have to be ready for that. If you're gonna go for a flag pull like that, you gotta go quick. Is what I'm trying to say. But in general, like, you gotta just play for the security of the map. A lot of what I've seen is, like, you get to a spot, maybe you don't even get to a spot in the first place, but you get to a spot a lot of times and then, um you are not really utilizing the spot. Also being on blue BR where you were before was okay. Like it was okay to just be here and then, you know, shoot your gun a little bit and get some information. Uh, but instead, you instantly pushed in to the guy blue window. And then even then, that's okay. Um, that actually worked out. You killed the guy blue window, but then you don't go for the flagpole right away. So it's just like, you're not really utilizing the advantages that you have uh, a lot of these times. 
from what it seems like. That's that seems to be like something that I I feel like is pretty consistent. There you go. I was just about to say there's no reason for you to go to the middle of the map. Get the top cap. There you go. Good shots. Good nade. You gotta check your corners. Still haven't checked fountain. You hadn't checked anyone or like anywhere below you. Which it happens to be a guy below you. I don't know why you're sprinting in. You're just letting them know where you are. You guys don't have enough presence right now to like really just be moving and sprinting around like you are. If there was like two dead, uh, or three dead, or and like the rest of the guys are weak and you know where they are, the way you're moving is okay, but Right now, when they're four alive and they have like practically full control with snipe, you can't be moving the way you're moving right now. You gotta just walk. You just gotta walk it out and try and get a kill, um, and try and get an easy kill at that while you're doing this kind of playing play. Because now you just did some damage and it was pretty much all for nothing. But again, it all kind of started with you leaving the post at top snipe. You really shouldn't have left top snipe the way you did. You left your teammates out the dry again. What rank is he? Um, I'm not sure. I wasn't paying attention whenever I uh, downloaded it. Oh, Onyx, there you go. So you got the snipe this time. A little sluggish with the shots, but it's okay. Again, I think this is still small detail, but will allow for a higher ceiling in general for the plays that you can make is especially in H5 at least when you have the like the utility like when you're in these gunfights here when you're in this gunfight like top cat and you're getting shot and you see there's a lot of people you got to like recognize again it's, it's the general awareness of like where you are at you can easily start walking backwards or even just thrust backwards to get a couple shots and then like try and play your life Cause that's what matters the most here. You guys just got a kill, and you have like pretty solid control. You just need to not die. Um, I don't know. Let's just see if you die here. I think you, yeah, you do die. Because if you thrust backwards here, you probably still end up living. You take that fight. You, you see there's two people. All right, just dip out, thrust back. Or if you're gonna thrust out this way, thrust backwards this way. That general awareness will keep you alive in so many, like so many more like situations in general. You just need to recognize, again, where you're at and what's available to you. Blue flag but it's, it seems like uh, the lack of that awareness is definitely kind of causing you to just kind of die in very unnecessary ways. Ooh, radical placement again, but... Like, once you're in these positions, you you gotta just, you know... Like, if you're top rockets, if I'm top rockets, I'm not sprinting, dude. I'm not sprinting until I know that I need to sprint. Like, if I get a guy one shot on this corner, or, like, on this corner, all right, then I'm sprinting down the sprint slide thrusting, whatever, down that ramp to, like, push this guy out. Um, but most of the time, if I'm top rockets, like, I'm going to chill here for a second. Same if I'm top cat. If I get the top cat from the BR, I'm going to get the top cat, look around a little bit, maybe I already checked low, and then I'm going to move out and, like, look around. But for what I'm noticing, it's like you get to a position, you don't even really recognize like you are in A or B position, and then you just kind of leave it right away. It's lucky that you got the first melee on that guy that was pushing up the ramp, because if he was a little bit more aware, he probably would have won that gunfight. Yeah, we're definitely watching probably one of the rougher games from Purple here. So yeah, I'm sure he doesn't play like this every game, it's just, this is probably the worst of it. Which, you'll be able to learn the most from the worst experience. Again, you autopiloted straight to elbow. This is okay in this situation, since you're not really getting pushed out. But if you're the only one alive, the, what, where you're at is actually bad. You want to try and play sneaky and like just get through, if that's your plan. But again... I still think you probably need to get better control um, at snipe. 
I think actually pushing low elbows, it's like a, it's like a 50-50, whichever one you kind of want to do. Being aggressive low while these guys are all pushed back to their base is actually pretty solid, I think, because if you can get here, let's just see. Like, if you just kind of chilled here and played low, you probably would have been able to catch, like, this guy off guard, for example. Um, rather than being top rockets. But instead, you went out elbow, then you doubled back. It's like, you gotta do one or the other. You gotta make a choice. You're gonna go low elbow, so that, since your entire team's dead, you cannot be going top rockets, because you're probably just gonna get melted if you do. Go low elbow, try and just play your life, see what you can do from there, or take control of your base, like you are now, and push back through to snipe. A lot of nades being thrown rather than just like, you know, just kind of putting your body out there. When this position right here, that first nade's okay. That first nade's perfectly fun. Um, but if I see that there's nobody here, and I threw that nade, my teammate's cave, I'm instantly walking out. I'm walking towards fountain. I'm checking this angle, and of course the guy's here at this point, but I check that angle, and then I'd probably get up to top cat, BR to top cat. Because um, here's the thing, is like if you can get low right here, and look up, like you're doing from way back here, you're going to be able to just pivot so much like more efficiently. Because like, where your position right now doesn't really allow for much, if that makes sense. You, you can't really do much uh, without, you know, burning a thrust or sprinting, and then maybe a guy pokes to shoot you while you're sprinting. You should have already been moving forward since you have this available space right here to just walk through without even being seen on top of that. You easily could have just walked through and shot this guy and doubled this guy on the BR, actually. That guy should not be alive there. That's kind of like where this is all coming to. And you, uh, I will say you effectively did not work with two teammates there. You're kind of just back and forth, back and forth, not too sure what you should be doing. You chucked a nade, you didn't help your teammate fight the guy top snipe, and then you weren't really aware that your teammate was shooting this guy on the BR. So, a little bit of indecisiveness in that situation. But that right there is what I mentioned earlier about when things are not going too well, and you got, like, they're pushing on your base, kind of just chilling cave is okay. So everything leading up to that, not so great. Um, but after that happened, and then they pushed into your flag, you kind of just waited for them to do that, and that's okay. They walked into it, like I said, you should do, and then you can get those free shots like you just did. Don't need to go for the re right away. Yeah, no. When the flag's out, like, right there, and you know there's a guy elbow, like, you gotta just get some damage, you know, peek a little bit, just walk out, get some shots. Like, that flag, even if the guy sprints in, like, say a guy sprints in for the pool right away, like, he still has a little bit of a, a little bit of a run right here to get to that, and if you're just right here ready for it, just playing, like, the head glitch and then checking your back, waiting for your teammates to, you know, help you or push up snipe, whatever it is, um, you just gotta be more cognizant of, like, where you're placing yourself. Ooh, you burned your thrust. Somehow you don't die, but that's okay. Okay, at this point, now you should be playing elbow. So you're pushing snipe. So, I've been telling you this entire game to pretty much not play elbow, but this is one of those situations where you guys have full control of elbow, or snipe, and no control of elbow. Now is your time to be playing, like, elbow side. Or, yeah, you just need presence here. You need somebody, you need at least, like, one person, at least, like, kind of aware of what's going on elbow side. Um, and usually, since there's so much cover, you do need somebody here. So you should have been still on your window, seeing what's going on, and then peeking elbow, and then just kind of walking out to see what's up. Um, the analysis videos like this, the reviews, they just kind of come as they go. People, they are 20,000 channel points. Yo, Angelus, with the 12 months, the one year, let's go! I appreciate that. I appreciate the continued support through an entire year. Thank you, Angelus. Gotta get some hype up for the one year. Gotta get some hype. Yeah, I'll definitely up, uh, upload this to YouTube. Yo, what's up, Restream? Okay, let's get back to this. So, like I said, you need to be playing elbow. It's just free for that guy elbow to walk through now. 
okay, but you're at least helping your teammates. It's not too bad. Ooh, that's really unfortunate, though. Yeah, I mean, this. a lot of this just all stems from you not... Um, you not playing elbow and then having to like look back at this point. That guy really shouldn't be moving with that, you know. He also got pretty far out with the flag before you even realized that he was flag gets pulled now. And that's okay, you're not looking, you fight that guy. It probably took you a little too long to recognize because if you instantly walked out while he was doing this, that guy's trying to run a flag, he's He's just fumbling it. You probably could have fived them. But instead, like, you were just kind of unaware, sprinted, okay, then turned. It's hard to always be aware of these, these things, but you, you do need to try and, you know, just try and be a little bit more aware. Because if I knew a flag was out and I'm top snipe, I'm not pushing into that base just yet. Unless we have, like, everyone dead, or, like, there's one shot in the base, then I instantly push into window. That's, like, the only other thing I do. Um, but otherwise, I'm probably like top cat, like just fiending to figure out where the guy is. And if he was window, I would have just gotten very easy shots on him, like up here. But instead, like I said, you kind of—it still kind of stems from the indecisiveness. You helped that guy on blue fountain to kill that guy, and then you sprinted out, and then you turned in late, like very late, because you could have even just pushed straight into this window um, when your teammate was kind of like looking in, but. I kind of digress for that point. You overall, it still stems from you needed to make sure you you were the last guy, you were the anchor. You needed to actually be making sure everything was still safe and sound on elbow and that flag was not getting moved. So you come off respawn. Oh, no, flag's still out. Yeah, flag's out like this. You cannot be trying to, you can't be trying to look for this guy. You cannot yeah, you were too tunneled. Way, way too tunneled. Can we just get a flagpole? Oh, man. This is hard to say. I feel like in this situation, if I hear that my teammate's getting a flagpole, I actually go window here. Like, I chuck a nade behind him window, and I, like, get up here to kind of just be this outpost position to just do whatever, to help wherever. Because those guys were just double running that flag. Either way, you should have already been looking at flag initially. Um, but you gotta you gotta use your positions wisely, and like recognize where you're able to influence the most. Um, because you've just been out of it. You've been out of that fight for or out of like the important fight for a minute now. The important thing is that flag. Um. I don't know why your teammate's pushing in. He honestly could have helped with flag too. But keeping track of flag, even soaring. Like at this point, it's 2-1. They're about to cap, and flag's just out in the open right there. I mean, I try and just do my best to like not get shot by that guy window. And then just look at flag. Maybe like try and keep moving forward, silver to silver. To like hop this return, desperate return, um, whenever you get a chance to. But... Then your teammates get your teammate gets a flag pull and you're not even helping him. That flag's already so far gone that you're not really gonna be able to do much. So um I would say some of the biggest issues is probably just general lack of awareness about where to expect people to be pushing from, what's open. If you're in like the right positions, how to use them. Those are probably some of the um, biggest things I noticed, the most, like, consistent problems, uh, throughout that, like, gameplay.